Everyone, what's up? It's time for Tech Talk. And as you can see, I'm still in mourning. Anywho, I'm going to talk about stuff that cheered me up. This is my website. You haven't seen it already. www.thingsagoba.com. There's a lot of updates going on in the background. If you have not already been made aware, a lot of updates. I even made that uh, a point in this week's episode of the show. So tune in for that for to find out just how much has been going on. But also to check out my website because if you walk through it, there's a lot more available now. And there ever has been, and there's a couple of pages that will go live maybe in about a month or so with other things that are coming up. Um, on top of that, I also recommend you check out my locals community, which should be opening now. And my locals community, you'll be able to find exclusive stuff, including off the record that I moved it over here. Um, you it's free to join if you want to support me there, great by all means do so. But um, some of the posts will eventually, way down the road, uh, become you know, subscriber only. But until then, you can check out everything for free. All you got to do is join Locals. And as always, check out my stuff at www.thesegova.com. Today, I need to rant on this stuff. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep my thoughts concise because uh, in the episode of the main show that went up, um, I was giving a basically updates and backgrounds about what's been going on with the show, but also covering some tech stuff and uh, and other news that uh, were pertinent to me. And one of them was this. And that's what basically made me go on the super long rant that I, I ended up, you know what? I shot that thing like four times. And at the last one, I'm like, I can't talk about onward mobility because it always throws everything out um, off tangent. Well, it makes me go on a tangent. So this is what they put up back on January 7th, 2022. The same day that BlackBerry announced au revoir, its end of life to the legacy OS and BlackBerry 10 OS and Playbook OS. So bummer, all gone. To those who have waited so long, says the tweet from Online Mobility, the first one in about a year, we are humbly aware that we all use some form of communication as we reach the end of 2021. Dude, you're posting on 2022. To misquote Mark Twain, contrary to popular belief, we are not dead. When you open the link, it takes you to the blog post. But I want to land on the landing page because they don't—they're not highlighting when you land there, BlackBerry. But you scroll down, eventually you'll see it. Like, okay, so where is it? Wait, there it is, BlackBerry, new 5G BlackBerry to come. Supposed to come in 2021. What is going on? Do they still have the team here? Because if they still have the team, these people aren't there anymore. It's there's nobody there. Okay, um, they clear that out. No, 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 they just took a while to load. Uh, some of these people are not there anymore, so uh, I don't know what the dealio is. Um, Peter Franklin has been really silent since his uh, interview with uh, Nikki Asia, or whatever it's called, from almost a year ago. So the news blog, they say they were going to be doing uh, more to update us, uh, to keep us in the loop. While we encountered various delays that prevented us from shipping in 2022, we will be providing more regular updates starting this month that will clarify and answer many of your questions about the ultra-secure 5G enterprise smartphone still with a keyboard we're bringing to market. That was January 6, 2022, and we haven't heard a thing since. They were supposed to provide updates. We didn't get diddly squat. What's going on? All of us at our mobility are incredibly grateful for the community of loyal users for this opportunity to the media. We'll be ready to deliver news and speak with you soon, and we look forward to it. Here's the thing, though. They say we will be providing more regular updates starting this month, and they didn't, that will clarify and answer many of your questions regarding the ultra-secure 5G enterprise smartphone. What, is it not a BlackBerry smartphone anymore? Just no mention of BlackBerry at all. On the blog post, which is actually something really small that could have been done in a tweet, but nothing. There hasn't been anything since, and people are are bashing them in the comments, like, "Dude, it's it's already been nearly a month, and you still haven't given us any update as to what is actually going on, other than, yeah, sorry, we didn't tell you anything for like ten months." So yeah, this is frustrating. Um, and that's why I moved on. Uh, the, the Crackberry team over at uh, crackberry.com, Kevin Mickle actually bought his website back and is doing something different with that. In fact, I haven't checked it out recently, so maybe he's doing something else with it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, not since the the uh, the end of the BlackBerry phone era podcast have I seen an update besides the join the VIP. Um, but here it is. BlackBerry uh, cashing in on legacy patents. I'll get to that in a bit. I, I just saw that too. 
Um, so check out that podcast to talk about all things that Kevin Mechel is doing with uh, Crackberry. Mr. Bobo himself also popped up on the um, on the podcast, which is a great conversation. But they were raising the point that Blackberry wasn't mentioned in that blog post. That could have been a tweet. True, there was no mention of it. But Blackberry is predominantly on their website and still on their social media stuff. So unless they're violating a trademark rights or copyright infringements, they're still maybe doing a Blackberry. So this in conjunction with uh, this announcement from uh, from BlackBerry. Um, it's, I guess, uh, CrackBerry is just covering it. Who, who wrote the Ka-Ching? Oh, Ka-Ching, like Ka-Ching. Like, oh, Kevin Michael actually wrote it. BlackBerry cra- cashing on the legacy patents to the tune of $600 million in a move that makes it more apparent that BlackBerry has moved beyond making phones. Today, the company announced has entered into a patent sale agreement, netting the company $600 million. Yes, BlackBerry is basically being done with their uh, smartphones. But what's interesting, though, according to this thing, it's not about legacy patents regarding their phones. So just like WebOS made a return, could it be that someone will then take what BlackBerry has neglected with uh, BlackBerry OS, um, BlackBerry 10 OS, like the legacy OS, like 7 and all that, uh, maybe even BlackBerry Messenger or whatever, and do something with it? I, I don't know. That'd be cool. And... I guess we'll see. Did it say who they're selling it to? Catapult is a special purpose vehicle formed to acquire the BlackBerry patent assets. Catapult's principal funding for the acquisition will be a $450 million senior secure term loan for which has received $400 million of conditional commitments from lending syndicates, led lending syndicate led by Toronto-based Third Eye Capital that includes a Canadian pension fund. So I guess they're going to be receiving some money uh, from there. Yeah, BlackBerry was obviously squandered. They didn't have any forward vision. They had an opportunity when they were getting a bunch of free press, particularly last year, to really push BlackBerry Messenger Enterprise when people were jumping ship from from WhatsApp. The WhatsApp, they BlackBerry initially sued because WhatsApp was ripping off or being a clone of BlackBerry back in the day. And since then, like, dude, people are abandoning WhatsApp. This is your opportunity to really strike at this to get people to jump onto your platform. No, no, no. Let them go to Signal or Telegram. Way to go, BlackBerry. Nice going. You really know how to market your own product. Man. Anyway, I'm done with that. I don't want to dwell on this one too much, but let's talk about the new things on iOS 15.4, iOS 15.4, uh, I, iPad OS 15.4, and Mac OS 12.3. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to talk about those things. You can also check them out on, uh, on this uh, summary page at pocketnow.com uh, you, if you still find it. Universal control has been the thing I've been looking forward to because I, I have been using Sidecar with my MacBook Pro and um, old iPad, and, and it works. It works pretty good, actually. It's just that it's cumbersome to launch the sidecar. So I have been waiting for Universal Control to see how that will work out. And I've seen this video. Um, I don't know if this was a uh, different version or something like that, but they did it. But let me address really quick what um, many people are finally talking about, the, the pregnant man and pregnant person emoji. You're... Honestly, very late to the party. This is, uh, we knew about this a year ago for those of us, us in the tech space. And well, it's finally, it's finally launching, but this is all that you're seeing here. This is all beta. So technically it's not available just yet, but the point is that it's coming. And of course, uh, Apple is, is, has been known forever for being a virtue signaler. And, and there you go. All I want is an option to not have to see all emojis on a keyboard? Can I find a way to just select the ones that I actually use instead of having to parse through all these things? I mean, you make, uh, I don't know which which keyboard it was that makes you pick the skin color. So why do I have to see everything that I don't use? So that's my one complaint about all that. Uh, and of course, the stupidity of the other things. Yeah, it's a stupidity. Okay, on to the next year. This was actually dropped uh, just now as I was going um, up with uh, um, the video. So the image is the next generation Android auto surface. Does it look like Apple CarPlay? Uh, I have to check. Um, I want to say, well, I guess the rounded corners kind of make it seem that way, right? But uh, yeah, actually, that does look like CarPlay, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, because I've been waiting for uh, for some kind of update. They recently did one, but I'm waiting for another update for Android Auto because uh, Android Auto has a second screen on your phone. That one is basically retired or sunsetted because now there's driving assist through Google Voice. So I am curious. This, 
I guess it's supposed to be styling the theme of Android 12, but it does look a lot like um, CarPlay. So I'm curious to see how that's going to feel once it rolls out, whenever it rolls out. What is this? Oh, some uh, I guess someone's really beta testing this thing or alpha testing. I don't know what stage that it's in. That's interesting. What do you mean cast? Is it like a Maricast? Huh. Interesting. Curious about that. All right, that was the last one. All right. Well, I guess that's that for, for Android Auto. It interests me. Thought I'd share. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to touch upon, I don't want to make this long. Um, I think I'm keeping in time. I want to address a little bit about the infighting because in my last tech talk, I did talk about the controversy with Getter and, and, uh, and other things, but I was talking really about the other platforms, the social media that do exist and where you can find me as well. Cause I'm across all of those, but one specifically, because this actually happened afterwards, and uh, some of them, some, those that don't follow me on social probably missed this. Um, Jason Miller, the CEO of uh, Getter, was on uh, Tim Pool or Tim in real life or IRL, and it didn't go very well for him because of the whole censorship controversy, the platforming, shadow banning, and all that that's been going on. And he had zero answers for all of it. It was just a very, very bad look, very bad PR for um for jason miller after the whole platform was cheering at hey joe rogan's here and then what ultimately ended up happening uh joe rogan ended up trashing a getter just within days and was talking even about deleting it that's not the kind of press you want after you greeted somebody on the platform and um you know, I, I shared in the previous one about like the the inflation of numbers and like how could Joe Rogan have nine million followers when the platform itself doesn't even have half of those subscribers? Uh, so I addressed that already in the last one, so you can check that out. And I, I go even more in depth in it. But um, Jason Miller had a, a reaction. I think that was the same day that Andrew Torba, the CEO of Gab, went on uh, Tim IRL uh, to discuss Gab on the platform and. This is Jason Miller's post responding, and the post is unavailable. Now, the post that was that he was quoting was that somebody uh, I did see the post says Gab is better than Getter. It was a uh, it was like a, a meme that was created on Gab that someone posted on Getter, and the user whoever that was posted it there. And Jason Miller responded to that says, "See you in the App Store." Said nobody uh, laughing with tears. Um, Moticon or you no know, e emoji. To which I responded, uh, I, I quoted it, uh, being on the app store means to compromise. Truly, the infighting must stop. Y'all are supposed to be on the same team. Uh, because uh, this was not a good look for Jason Miller on that one after what he said. It's like, dude, if you're on the app store, technically that means you are not for free speech. You're actually doing the bidding of big tech because in order to be on Apple and Google, you have to adopt their um, uh, censorship guidelines and the platforming guidelines and uh, whatever other code of conduct and ethics or whatever uh, that they have to apply to your so-called freedom of speech platform. And that was not a good look. So, uh, yeah, I covered the controversy, but I had to address this because there was a lot of mudslinging on both sides. So on Gab, um, I go over and I post that same day, January 21st, the left wins because they're united against liberty and freedom. Meanwhile, our only reach among platforms outside of Beck Tech is being stifled by infighting. It's a microcosm of what happens at a grander scale. Don't complain when we don't win. We have ourselves to blame. And I posted some screenshots of that very thing I just showed you. Like, oh, see you in the app store. said nobody. said Jason Miller. Uh, to which then you see the stuff that's in the... Uh, uh, like in the comment section at the time, um, there's there's a lot of mud being sl uh, slinging there, like uh, trashing Jason Miller, but then also trashing Gab, then the others from Gab coming on to trash Getter, not to mention what goes on on Gab. And from the, from the top on down, it was just all this infighting was just insane. I'm like, dude, it's like, can we focus our attention on a unified front to actually – uh, debate and argue ideas that matter to us and be on the same page. And some are going to argue no, and, and I get it because they feel like those that compromise, such as they how they perceive those on get or maybe even those on parlor in a way, will say, no, they're, they're at the reasons why we are in the mess that we find ourselves in the first place because they're all talk, no bite when it comes to pretending the First Amendment. Or on the other side, will be too entrenched in their beliefs that they won't dare to get out of that trench because, no, you come to me. 
So how do we come together to have a unified front to stop the onslaught uh, that's um, basically eliminating the freedom, freedom of speech because we're giving big tech all that uh, all that power? Not to mention that there's the Second Amendment that the government is completely trying to eradicate. So I ask the question, when the first is given up and the second is taken away, how long would it take for the third to follow? The third Amendment where uh, the, the government is not allowed to house troops in your homes during times of peace. Even during times of war, they just can't do that. Look into that. Some people think it's antiquated. Is it, though? Think about it. Our Bill of Rights are eroding before our very eyes. That's why the honk heard around the world is very significant and very important in this day and age. So to, to those Canadian truckers for freedom that sparked uh, this this movement of truckers uniting from quite literally all over the world to do their own convoy to honk for freedom. Yeah, my hat's off to you, quite literally. Yeah, we we stand with you. Thank you. Keep it up. You no know, peaceful and patriotic protests. That's uh, and letting your voices be heard. Way to go. Anywho, that's all I got to say about all this. Hashtag truckers for freedom. Check that out uh, for those of you that care and if they're. They're not. If you don't find them on the usual suspect uh, on social media because they're being shadow banned or deplatformed, then you definitely find them on places like Getter and Gab because where they've been a lot more active. So that's it. That's where I'll leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for updates. This is probably the last tech talk I do for a while because technically the show's going to hiatus. This is not really part of the show per se. But if you want to check all my video exclusive stuff that doesn't make it to the podcast, when you go to my website, yeah, you'll be able to find them here with video exclusives. Um, I made it a point to only use platforms, other platforms that I'm on, not YouTube only. Just to go check the stats too. So anyway, that's it. That's where I'll leave it. Thank you so much for watching. The GOAT retired. The goat retired. Wow, 22 years. Anyway, I got to move on with my life. <laughs> Just like he is. Thanks very much for watching, yo. And I'll see you in the next one.